Hello, and welcome to Lord Nelson's blog. Here with me today, I have Francesca Bukowski, who is an undergraduate student in the Department of Animal Sciences at Rutgers University. My name is Ellen Rankin, and I'm a graduate student with the Equine Science Center at Rutgers University. So, Francesca, can you share a fun fact about yourself with our listeners who can get to know you a little bit better? Sure thing. So, uh, my go-to animal science, in fact, is that I, I'm an equestrian. I've ridden horses for 12 years, and right now I'm retraining an off-the-track thoroughbred. Very cool. 12 years is a long time. That's <laughs> your life, I do believe. Yep. <laughs> so we're going to start with kind of the beginning of the story, I guess, and ask you about what motivated you to pursue a Bachelor of Science in Animal Sciences. Sure. So... Ever since I was little, I always knew that I wanted to be a veterinarian. I loved animals. I loved the science behind animals. I loved learning more about them and asking questions about them. And even though uh, to go to that school and become a veterinarian, you don't specifically need a bachelor's in animal science. In fact, uh, for most programs, you don't need a bachelor's degree at all just to complete the regular requirements. But the curriculum for a degree in animal science does a really good job of ensuring that you will meet all of the course requirements as well as the experience requirements to be competitive going into veterinary school and will be a huge asset when you become a veterinarian. So that's why I opted for that route. Very cool. So I'm going to say it's safe to assume that your projected career path and plan after graduation is vet school. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Wonderful. So what role has science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, played in your education? Oh, my goodness. Well, STEM has been a huge part in the foundation of my education. I found that in my experience, my STEM courses and STEM experiences have been the ones that have really introduced me to critical thinking, which, uh, God willing, as a future vet will be essential as I'm practicing. So that critical thinking, I think, is intertwined with STEM like this, and that's where you really learn to build those skills. Yeah, I really agree with you, and I think that's a really great point, Francesca. Thank so you. For all of these, so for all of these aspiring veterinarians out there that might be listening to our blog, um, would you encourage them to really pay attention during their STEM classes in oh, high school oh, I'm sorry. and middle school? Absolutely, for sure. And I found that even STEM classes, it sounds a little bit funny, but they also encourage types of creativity, which normally you associate creativity with other types of classes, like, um, like liberal arts type classes. But I found that a thinking outside of the box creativity really develops in those STEM classes. And the more that you engage in those classes as early as elementary school, middle school, the more you'll be able to practice that type of thinking, that critical thinking, that thinking outside of the box creatively. You'll be able to develop those skills and they'll serve you really, really well pretty much no matter where you go in life, even if you don't plan on going towards a specifically STEM field, but they will absolutely help you if you do. Fantastic. So all I left it out there should be taking lots of STEM courses and it sounds like. Absolutely. Um, so then I wanted to ask you about what has your experience as a woman in a STEM, in a STEM field like this been like? Good question. So I have, it's actually been really great to be frank. 
And I'm in a little bit of a unique situation in the, as a woman in my particular STEM field, because at least in my experience, I've seen a transition in the veterinary field from a formerly male dominated field shifting towards a more female dominated field. I've been fortunate enough to work with plenty of female veterinarians who have been really wonderful mentors and role models for me. So I've had a really excellent experience as a woman in my field. It's really great to hear. And that leads us perfectly into the next question. You mentioned some of these mentors. So I assume mentors have played a pretty big role in shaping where you are today and kind of your future plans. Can you, can you talk about those mentors and what they've given you and who they've been? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to have to do the, um, the uh, like a little snapshot version because I've been, I've been so lucky to have a ton of fantastic and instrumental mentors without whom I, I wouldn't be here today. And I would say that going, actually going a bit back to the critical thinking and STEM discussion that we had had, the, one of my first mentors was my high school chemistry and physics teacher, Ronald Hazlitt. That was the class that, that and he was the mentor that really taught me how to think critically for the first time using skills and concepts that we would learn in class and then applying them to questions, to problems, to labs that we had never seen before. And that, that really solidified my love for science and problem solving. Then come, and I promise this is not, I'm not saying this because I have to, but when I came to Rutgers, pretty much everyone in the Equine Science Center has been a really essential mentor for me. Uh, Dr. McKeever, I had sent, I was interested in getting into research as an incoming freshman, and I found his research blurb online, and I had sent him an email before ever having introduced myself or having met him, asking if there were any research opportunities. And as an incoming freshman, he responded to me within a couple hours and said, we start on Friday. We'll see you at the Red Barn. And through him, I got involved in animal research for the first time in my life. And it was something that I really loved. And I found that I've, I have a passion for. And that segues really nicely into my next mentor, Dr. Malinowski, who showed me where that research goes in the equine industry. Through her, I've been able to participate in a lot of different events in the New Jersey equine industry. And I've been able to see how different parts of that industry network work together. I've been able to meet people from different sectors of the equine industry and build skills that I'm going to need to be able to use when I, as a veterinarian, will be a part of that network. And then finally, uh, Dr. Williams with the Equine Science Center, I actually knew before coming to Rutgers, uh, I volunteered with her a lot at the Horse Park of New Jersey. And even before I knew she was a professor, I always admired her dedication to her community, her, her skill as a horseback rider, and her communication skills and her teaching ability. And with her, I have learned so many practical skills that I am going to take with me to vet school and beyond, from drawing blood to taking fecals to different restraints of horses. And I would not be who I am today without all of these fantastic mentors. Thanks for sharing, Francesca. And what really strikes me is the diversity of things that you you learn from your mentors. It's a really wide swath of information and skills that you've picked up. I think Absolutely. it's really interesting. So I know you took 
like a city of broad trip to Belize. Mm -hmm. Do you want to share a little bit about that experience and what it was like? Oh gosh, I I don't even know where to start with that. That was that was absolutely an experience that I will take with me for the rest of my life. I had talked to a lot of people who had taken the trip previously when I was learning about it and learning what to expect. And the one recurring theme was words can't do it justice. And that is absolutely 100% true. I, let me think. Um, one, I would say if I had to pick a highlight of that experience, it would probably be the low cost spay neuter clinics that we did. So we had a, a the veterinarian that we were working with does, um, he will go out to underserved areas of the country and set up mass spay neuter clinics for the population at very low cost, which they normally Normally, people in Belize have a difficult time being able to afford getting their pets spayed or neutered. So this provides those people with that opportunity. And it was really interesting from both a an academic yeah, excuse me, an academic perspective, a cultural perspective, and just the overall experience was incredible. While the veterinarians performed the actual surgeries, the students on the study abroad experience sutured up the incisions, applied the antibiotic ointments, and monitored the patients during recovery. So that in and of itself was absolutely incredible. What was also really incredible was to see how the people interacted with us, with the veterinarians and with their animals. We had a lot of young, young children, four, five, six years old, bringing their dogs with, you know, uh, um, excuse me. Oh, I'm having a hard time thinking of the word. Uh, uh, bell string leashes. And it was so neat to see how how much these kids wanted to learn and how they really, how much they loved their animals and wanted to do what was best for them, even when they might, they might have never had this opportunity before, which was really neat to see. And the appreciation of all of the people we interacted with came through monumentally. We had so many people thanking us because they wouldn't have had this opportunity before. And overpopulation, especially of dogs, is a huge problem in Belize. So not only are we helping these people preserve the health and longevity of their animals, but we're also helping the community ecosystem in Belize by helping with the overpopulation problem. Sounds like an amazing experience, kind of a once in a lifetime type of experience. It really was. So now we're going to turn from the once in a lifetime to the more typical everyday experiences. <laughs> so what does your typical day as a undergraduate student look like? Or is there such a thing? <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure how typical my day as an undergraduate would be applied like on a large scale, but I could definitely give you my typical day, so to speak. So I'm a commuter student. So my day usually begins, I wake up, I eat my bowl of oatmeal and my banana for breakfast, and I head on up to school. Usually if there's some research going on over on Riders Lane or at the treadmill barn, I'll come by, I'll work on research. Those usually tend to happen in the morning. And then I'll go to my classes during the day. Uh, usually in between classes, I'll hang out in the library to get some work done or uh, grab some lunch over at Harvest. And then sometimes most of my clubs are in the evening, if there ever are any. I'm part of the 
uh, the Veterinary Science Club, as well as the Wildlife Club. And after that, I will usually head home and head to the barn to train my horse. Head back home, sleep, rinse, and repeat. <laughs> Love it. So it sounds like you're very active as a student and lots of um, extracurricular activities things like research or clubs. Yeah. So do you think that is important for undergraduate students to do those types of activities? Oh, for sure. They always, one of, a ton of schools will always say, oh, you'll find something, go out there and you'll find something that'll fit you. And it sometimes that it, they repeat that so much that you almost start to not believe it. But I can definitely attest that there is a place for you at whatever school you're at that will fit your interests and that you will find that a place that you will find that you love being a part of. And for animal science students at Rutgers specifically, I found that uh, introduction to animal science, one of the classes that you'll most likely take as an incoming freshman, is a fantastic networking opportunity for research, for extracurriculars. There's a ton of guest lecturers who will come in at different parts of the semester. And a lot of them will, at the end of their presentations, will explain any research that they have going on, if they're the advisors of any clubs or organizations. And there's time at the end of class for students to approach these professors and ask about any opportunities. I did that, and I, I literally would not be here at this interview if I hadn't. So I would absolutely encourage people to get out there, network, put themselves out there, and find extracurriculars that they're passionate about and that they love to do. Thank you, Francesca. So you shared lots of great advice with our listeners today. Are there any things that you wanted to share that you haven't had a chance to do so yet? Or anything mm -hmm. I've missed? Not that I can think of. The biggest one is don't be afraid to put yourself out there. It's as cliche as it sounds. I, my experience at Rutgers would have been so much less rich and I I wouldn't have had nearly the quality of experiences that I've had was I not part of the Equine Science Center or the Veterinary Science Club or the Wildlife Society. So, yeah. Thank you, Francesca. That's really wonderful. And I really appreciate you sharing your time with us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.